may not know, he is actually from where I live now, Indio, California, but that's not where he's broadcasting from. He's actually broadcasting from a hotel room. He's actually going to do a cooking demo from a hotel room, which just proves that you can eat healthfully anywhere. He has lost 90 pounds on a plant-based diet and within two months reversed his type 2 diabetes. He's going to be making a watermelon ceviche. I hope I said that right. Please welcome Chef Anthony Cruz. Thank you so much for being here. Hi, Chef AJ. Hi, uh, fellow watchers, <laughs> listeners. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so uh, I decided uh, to make this even more fun. I uh, like, why don't we bring this little thing on the road that I'm doing here and try to just see if I can pull it off in a hotel room. So I'm in Las Vegas right now, and uh, yeah, I have this. My, I have uh, the so the, uh, the the table in the room here set up as a prep table, in the, and then it's a little mini kitchen in here. So we're ready to go. Absolutely. If you want, you can either tell your story now, during, or or after. But I'm sure people want to know how you found out first about a plant based diet. And, and how it reversed your diabetes so quickly. Well, um, yeah, let's talk about it. Um, I mean, that, that's really what, uh, that's really why I'm here, right? <laughs> um, it was more uh, me just questioning things because like when I was diagnosed with type two diabetes in 2014, uh, the doctor I had at the time, he was like, you know, Anthony, you're not, you're not gonna be able to reverse this. You're gonna be on these medications for the rest of your life. You know, give me that thing to feel like, you know, um, about, you know, just, watch what you eat and exercise, and then we'll see you, you know? So I go, hey, doc, well, how can I reverse this? And he's like, well, you're gonna can't, you can't, you're gonna be on this for the rest of your life. And I was like, well, okay, I guess I got some work to do, <laughs> some research. So I just dug deep into research and uh, I figured, uh, I found uh, the documentary that really helped me was the uh, Plant Care Nation by Dr. T. Colin Campbell. That's the one that I watched to change my life because it was the first time I saw on camera, there was doctors there talking about you know, just changing what you have on your plate and you'll see changes in your health and your diet. And you'll start feeling better, you know, start looking better and you'll start having everything is going to start feeling better. You know, so I, I, I can wholeheartedly attest to that what they're talking about is very accurate. <laughs> it works for me. And um, um, so when I learned that information, um, I, I, I'm pretty much, uh, when, when I get inspired by something and I want to just push it as far as I can to see how far it's going to go with, with my inspiration. So when I heard these doctors say this um, and I got really inspired, I'm like, wait, there is an answer. There is hope for me. You know what? I'm going to um, figure out the best way to, to, to handle this. So from, so from my uh, perspective, it was like, okay, well, I basically got to start from scratch. I got to start from clean. I got to start clean. have to get rid of it and, and reset my kitchen. Uh, so I pretty much walked through my entire kitchen, got a big giant trash can and threw everything away. So I started with a, an empty kitchen. And then I'm like, um, I mean, I've always known how to cook. As a child, I was as a kid. I was a, I just a little wizard in the in the, in the, in the uh, refrigerator. I pull I pull things out of the refrigerator and, and whip up like salads to be my sister after school. But as far as like cooking vegan and cooking plant based, I really had no clue. Like I was just getting um, into this, like really not knowing what to expect, just, but also knowing that the answers were there, lied behind. They were deep. They were they were there somewhere for me. You know, I was I was feeling like I was um, I was getting closer to what I was looking for the answers, and. Um, yeah, so I, I did like I don't know how, I would I don't know how most people handle things or with uh, when they don't know what they're doing, but they uh, like for me, I started off on the on the uh, kind of like on the baking the process, the, like the gardening kind of things like that. that that's kind of where I, I started from, and then I'm like, okay, then I worked from there. I'm like, okay, uh, what is a healthier? Ver I'm always asking myself, what is a healthier version of this? How can I swap this for this? So I'm, I'm consciously making uh, choices that that I, I I'm looking at the uh, you know. Uh, what is what is this going to do to me? How is this going to make me feel? How is the, um, you know, what kind of energy is this food going to bring me or, or things like that? And I, I became very mindful of what I was putting my body. And when I did that, I was like, um, I just got very good at that, you know? So so now incorporating that into like what I do as a chef, like I, I feel like I, I can cook very intuitively. Like I know exactly what my body needs at all times. Like it's, it's always like telling me like, you know, this is what you're looking at, looking at and, and I'll make something and, you know, um, it's usually right on spot, on the spot. So it's interesting because, you know, I live in Indio now where you were born and raised and I don't actually see it as a Mecca of health, you know, so how was it living in where you live to, to make these kind of changes? What did your friends and family think? Uh, but, you know, like a lot of people that make these drastic changes in their life, like what's wrong with you? You're weird. You're, <laughs> you know, uh, you know, a little bit of just the, um, you know, and it was weird for me too. Like I, you know, I, 
basically that my whole life, you know, the same way. And all of a sudden, I just got to just do a 360 and go in a different direction. So it was, it was an adjustment period for sure. But as time went on, they understood, you know, what I was doing and how it was benefiting me. And they supported me. Um, but it's, it's, it's funny, though, because at first, too, when I saw the, the difference in myself, I was like, oh, well, I want to tell everybody. And I want to share this information. And I was like, you know, you get all excited and things like that. But then, then you realize, like, not everybody really wants that. You know, not, they're not ready for it or they don't. They don't really want people to tell them what to eat and what not to eat. You know, they just kind of want to be, I don't know, maybe just shown a little bit, but not really told. <laughs> Have you been back to your original doctor and is he aware that you were able to actually reverse your diabetes? You know, people ask me that all the time and, and no, I, I never went back and, and gave him that information. I just like, I don't know. I just figured, okay, well, let me just go from there. Oh, you know what? I was going to show you. I was going to share something. Do you mind if I got to me real quick? No, not at all. Okay. I think in the meantime, in the meantime, you can look at my setup right here. This is what I have set up on my table so far. That is so cool that you're cooking in your hotel room, or maybe in this case, it's raw dish, so it's uncooking. Your YouTube <laughs> showed the notification. Yeah, TS, your YouTube showed the notification from yesterday. Hmm. I don't know why that is because I changed it. I'm sorry about that. Yeah. <laughs> I, I once cooked. Oh, go ahead. No, I was going to say I once cooked in my hotel room in Portland for for I was at the raw food festival and there was nowhere to prep anything and I remember cooking in the bathroom too and using the bathtub to wash my food processor. I'm sure the hotel probably didn't like that, but hey, if there's a will, there's a way. Pretty fun, actually. You know, it's like mobile. It's like a mobile, mobile kitchen. You know, you could pretty much set up anywhere. So how, okay. do you, how do you know, Anthony, that your diabetes is reversed? Do you ever check your blood sugar or are you just, you know? That's what I was going to show you. So, so I went back and I had the original documents of my first blood work with the doctor. And then I got a new doctor. I went and got the blood work for that one. So it shows you. So I was going to read, I was going to read the numbers to you so you can see the difference because I have them in a binder together. I always carry them with me um, to, to share the information with people who, who maybe are in a little bit of disbelief to see how, how drastically uh, improved or how, improve, how much improvement I was able to make in the next short period of time. Um, let me see where else is. I don't know where it's at. But yeah, so when I went to the second doctor, he got the information and he's like, he looked at the numbers and he was uh, like, for example, uh, I believe my blood sugar was over in the 300s to start, and I, I was able to get it into the 90s, low 90s. Um, my triglycerides, the, my AC, all, everything was pretty much double than what it should have been. And uh, in the so in the second in the second set of blood work, um, it shows it shows the numbers like how how much improvement I made. And then from that point, the doctor was the second doctor was like, okay, you know, you did your you did your work, like you did your, you got rid of diabetes, you reversed it. He's like, how did you do it? And I was like, well, I just ate like mostly plants. I and he mostly plant based. So he's like, oh yeah, that would work. <laughs> and, that, and that was his, that was his response to that. And, oh yeah, that would work. That's terrific. So what do you eat right now? I'm I'm not really. I, I find myself right now more of like a snacker. Like I'll grab little small bites of things like this. I I I can't sit and eat like a full meal anymore for some reason. Like I just I'd rather have like. You know, some I, I'll have bowls set up around the house with like nuts and fruits and, and, and just different, you know, maybe some plant-based proteins and just, you know, little bites and things like that. You know, be, uh, uh, and, um, but I'll tell you my favorite thing to do to make when I am like going to make something, it'd probably be something like, uh, I just love like making like, I guess you would say like a, like a Buddha boy, like, you would say like some, king, I like some kind of quinoa, some kind of bean, and then some kind of vegetable and just some fun sauce to go with that. That's like my go-to. Very cool. You want to so you want to tell us about this recipe? Is this something that you make often? Is this something that this this yeah this recipe has actually evolved from a uh, uh, an original uh, a previous recipe I used to make. Well, I still make it, but it, it was based out of a, a cauliflower base to be here, and I mixed a couple of things into it. Um, but on a recent, uh, you know, I was I was in uh, Mexico this one time, and I saw this. Uh, it was at a vegan restaurant in Mexico in Tijuana called Veggie Small, and they do a, a version, and they do a, a watermelon ceviche there. So when I saw that, and I was like, and I tasted it, and I was like, wow, this is really good. So this is my this is my take on, on their uh, their version. So this is the watermelon ceviche. You know? 
So let me show you uh, what I have here. And then I also have, because you remember we're traveling on the, uh, we're on the road right now. I'm on the road, I'm in the hotel room, right? So you're not gonna, I'm not going to use my standard kitchen, kitchen equipment in a, in, a, in a hotel. You have to like think like and minimize like the way that you're using the, the, um, the, uh, my, the equipment. So my mixing bowl, what I want to so my mixing bowl that I to mix this together is just the mason jar, you see? So I'm gonna cut everything up, put it in the mason jar put the, the juice, the liquid, and then, and then mix it up like this, and then it'll be in, it'll be ready to go. It's so simple. <laughs> it sounds delicious. Okay, so let me show you my uh, ingredients here. I have, uh, let's see, just see like this. Let me flip this around. And you can see there's watermelon there. So there's fresh watermelon. There's a, uh, some jicama, some lemon, avocado, just for garnish, and a little bit inside of it. And then there's a cucumber. Then I have some fresh can you see that? cilantro. There you go, some fresh cilantro. And then in this uh, mysterious blue glass uh, bottle here <laughs> is uh, some fresh tomato juice. Okay. And then and it just kind of comes together. I mean, really, the hardest part about doing this is the prep work, which I'm sure most people who, who say they enjoy cooking but don't really enjoy that part of it, is the prep work, you know? No, it's not fun. Well, it's fun for me, but like some people don't don't enjoy doing that type of work. But yeah. I know, for me, I just put some jazz music on and I'm just there peeling and chopping and cutting. And it's fun. I think it's kind of meditative sometimes doing the prep work. Exactly, exactly. I would, I would have loved to have seen how you cut some of the things because I know different chefs have different techniques for cutting round objects. Oh, well, those are my proprietary techniques there. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I got to you, you, introduce you to Chef Bravo because you're funny like him. Um, no, I mean, I, 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 I mean, I think things I cut it so the way I was trained to cut it and, and some of the tools I went to. So, you know, and, uh, but I'm always looking for new methods too, and improvements in, in different ways of, of doing things too. I don't always just stick to one thing. Like if I see somebody or somebody shares something, I'm like, hey, that's cool. I'm gonna incorporate that somehow, you know, what I do. So you know, let me get my knife. Yeah, and, and I wanted to go ahead, get it. You can still hear me. So it only took, I, uh, Kristen, I don't know if this recipe will be posted because generally these raw recipes, they're not exact amounts, but we'll ask him when he, when he gets back. And uh, you can follow him on Instagram. I'll post that link. It only took two months to reverse your diabetes, but how long did it actually take to lose 90 pounds? I would imagine that took a little longer than two months. That took a little longer. I would say I, I took the slow and easy pace with that one. I wasn't, uh, you know, all, um, I, I, you know, the, I just, I wanted it to, to be like the weight came off naturally. I didn't want it to be this like instantly, oh, I'm, I'm like, um, I, it's the, like the weight's gone already. So. I purposely didn't go to the gym. <laughs> I, all I did for exercise was, well, eat correctly. And then I would go hike or ride my bike. And doing that, it took about a year and a half to lose 80 pounds, 90 pounds. Great. And once, the, and once the weight came off too, surprisingly for the first time in my life, because I've gone through periods too where I'd, I'd have a little weight gain and then I'd lose something or I'd, I'd get it back. But this time around, like it's pretty much been stayed off, staying off the whole time. I, I haven't really experienced much of a fluctuation. Wow. Uh, the, only thing, the only thing now is like, I, I, I want to go a little lower with my, and get closer to my, kind of like my weight in high school, you would say. So I know they're working in that area, but uh, you know. Valeria, who's watch, Valeria, who's watching live, said it took her two weeks to reverse her diabetes. Hers was just gestational and get off her insulin. That is fabulous. She has a great YouTube wow. channel, guys. If you want to follow her, it's called Supercharged Plant Based Lifestyle, right, Valeria? We can post the name of your channel, Valeria, and we'll link to it. So, Anthony, why don't you stay in Indio and do something here, like open a vegan restaurant that's healthy? Because there really isn't. Well, I don't know how you know if you can open a restaurant right now, but there's really not a lot of vegan restaurants in the desert and the ones that well, are, they're just full of oil. Like, do you, do you, do you, do you do completely whole food vegan? Like, or, you know, with like without the oil and things like that? 
I, I, I go back and forth. Like I'll go for a long period of time like that, and then once, and then I'll, and then I'll, then, I'll, then I'll have to be okay with myself having those things once in a while, you know. So I'm like that. Where I'll, I'll I'll go a certain way for a long time, and then I'm like, okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna go back and have some other stuff, but um, not as much as I used to. You know, I don't crave those things like I used to before. Right. But you know how to cook SOS free. So like, if, you know, you, you, you can cook both ways. Right, right, right. Yeah, exactly. Great. Like this uh, would be, this would be, uh, this would be one of those, I guess. There's no salt, no sugar, no oil in this one. I know it's perfect. It works out great. There's a question. Do you travel with your chef knives or do you borrow something from the hotel to do your prep work? This one, I just purchased about an hour ago at a local store. <laughs> but normally, um, uh, let's see. Normally I would have my knife with me, but they're, right now uh, they're not here, but it's okay. I mean, I just need one sharp knife. That's all, that's all it requires. It doesn't have to necessarily be a certain, you know, as long as your, uh, your knife is super sharp and, uh, you know, you have a little cutting board, you're good to go. Cool. Go ahead. All right. I wonder what the best way to show this is. If I have a little stand in or if I, if I, what if I push the camera back a little bit, get some more, and I can just kind of see that, huh? Okay, so here's my mixing bowl, okay? Here's the veggies. In the meantime, I'm just gonna put them on the side in these little small bowls until I get to them. And so I heat them on, my citrus, and a little, and then I usually like, if I'm gonna use a little bit, I'll put a piece of uh, lemon juice in that. And I like to start with the watermelon. And so you got to remember, because we're using it in a jar like this, and even, if, even when I make this recipe in the regular kitchen, uh, I like the, um, my pieces in this recipe to be all of a uh, similar size, you know. Uh, so that's what I'm looking for when I'm cutting, when I cut through this. Um, and I just make planks on the watermelon here. Just like this. I also teach cooking classes, by the way. Um, are you teaching them? Are you teaching them on the road, or do you teach them when you're here? I know you taught some at uh, at El Paseo. Uh, I was teaching them in El Paseo over at um, uh, Savory Fly Shop. Um, yeah. So all I do here is just get this watermelon, make it into these planks like this. Let's see if I can show you. And so, what's the glove for? Uh, the glove is for. Uh, well, for protection, <laughs> but it's also, uh, <laughs> it's also, I, 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 uh, I find that I, I like to use my hands a lot and things, so I have to be careful, like, especially with food, like, I want to touch all things, so if I know I always have a glow with my left hand, I can be safe to touch it, um, and also the second reason is, I, is, is, I don't know, there's, there's times in my life when I'm in kitchens and, and one of these knives will sneak up on me or a peeler, so I got really, I got hit pretty hard the other day with a peeler right in the, in the sink, so there's a, is it coming there that's it's, uh, healing right now? So that's another reason. Cool. Let me see. Okay. I'm going to move this over here. So because we're working with limited space and this cutting board is pretty small, you just want to make sure you, you don't want to crowd your, your cutting board, you know. Um, so you'll give yourself some room here. And I usually take like about two two of these pieces right here and just run the knife right through them. Uh, I can't tell you the exact measurements I use. It's just more of a visual thing for me, like most guys, I guess. But I will uh, give you my best estimate of that. So I would say that this bowl here is about a cup size, okay? So this, this is gonna, Serve two purposes. This is going to serve as our, uh, it's going to serve as a uh, a measuring device and also a serving device. So, I like to find products that I can use multiple things with it. You know, multiple purposes other than just a, a specific product for a specific thing, a job. You know, so this has two jobs. <laughs> okay, so let me show you what it looks like so far. So I cut it down into looks like that. Okay, now I'm going to take the knife and go across it again. And see, because also I have um, a free hand, I mean, a, a clean hand. Uh, so I have a clean hand and keeping this one clean, I can cut across like this. I can cut like this. Just 
like that, right? And then take the clean hand and just drop it in there, like that. So I'm gonna take, uh, let's see. If I was, if I had planned this ahead, I would just put a mark right here so you could tell you what, what, how much, uh, uh, how much info, oh, information, how much of a, uh, I've used so far. But I'm gonna guesstimate, and let's see, what's looking like. There. And just repeat the process. So just go again, do, just do uh, the rest of this. Either, either you're going to do the rest of this, or because of um, because we can actually see through our mason jar here, we can see how much we need. So um, cut it in this direction. Okay, and let me show you what it looks like again. Right here, you can see that's what I have going on so far. That looks beautiful. Where did you do your shopping at Whole Foods? Um, let's see. This was actually for the farmer's market. That's, that, that's the other advantage I have of being able to travel uh, like to these markets. Um, I'm able to, to, to get the, uh, the produce. I'm, I'm usually at the uh, Palm Springs Farmers Market on Saturdays. You can find me there shopping for uh, various things <laughs> that I'm using. Uh, I like, I like uh, I don't know, it's fun to me to just, it's just a, just a fun atmosphere, you know, for myself and be able to like meet farmers and, and talk to them and things like that and see what they're going through. Okay, so here we go. So here, I filled the entire jar with watermelon, but we're not going to use all of it because we're still going to need to add, we're going to add cucumber to this, we're going to add some cucumber, and we're going to add, you know, the avocado and stuff like that. So, what, so I have a second container here, which is a, um, so I'm going to just pour some out of this, take some out. And so I would say probably about half of this would be work, would work, okay? And the rest of it, well, obviously we'll just save it because, you know, it's not going to go bad, so I'm going to put it in the refrigerator. I got a I got a refrigerator over here down the you know on the end of the table here, so I'll just have cold water going for later on. Okay, next I take the uh, this is the cucumber here, and I've just peeled it, you know, clean, and I just take it. And similar to the watermelon, just make these planks. And I personally, um, um, some people like taking the seeds out of cucumber. Some people leave them. Uh, certain dishes, I I like to remove it. And so this is, I keep it in there. So for this one, I think we'll keep it in there today. Okay. And I'll show you what I did here once I finished it. Okay. So it should look like this. Here we go. Like that. Okay. And I'm going to say, I'm going to take about a handful of this. And I have a pretty big hand, so that's probably about a good size of this, about a cup size. Half a cup, maybe half a cup. I'll put some of that in there. Okay. And like that. So that's what we're looking like so far, okay? Got our watermelon, I got a cucumber. And then next, <clears throat> this is a jicama, this is organic jicama. Um, as a child, I remember eating this as a, as a healthy snack. Uh, my grandmother would like take it and put it on her table. So we would fill it up with like lemon juice and uh, some like chili sauce and uh, spices and stuff like that and uh, have fun with it. <laughs> so here's our jicama. Um, similar process. It's like I, I you know, make the plank for these, cut them um, evenly. Okay. 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 There we are. It's so pretty. 
Sometimes, too, I'll add a little bit of red onion just to give it some more color to it, some more crunch uh, and some more nutrition. Um, but honestly, I think I probably forgot it. <laughs> I thought I picked it up, but it's okay. So, all right. Here we go. We got jicama. I'm going to add a couple of a little bit of cilantro at the very top of this. And I'm going to add a little bit of this as well. The only thing I'm missing right now that I could probably would help me speed the process up is uh, I like to carry with me a, a, a citrus squeezer, it's like, a, like a handheld one, because it's just, um, you know, it's easier for, uh, you know, to get fresh juice into your thing. Uh, I mean, I could figure it with my hand, but I've just learned that um, whenever you can find a tool that can help you in the kitchen, it's always going to make your time, uh, your time, not, I guess, uh, it'll save you time. But also, it won't, you won't feel fatigued at the end of your, you know, at your kitchen duty because uh, you, you've let the, the equipment do its job. Um, okay. So it's looking good like that. So I'm going to start squeezing. Uh, I'm going to start with the whole lemon. And here's what it's looking like now. You can see it. I'll give you a better picture. You, you know that. what? I, this almost seems like if you cut everything smaller, it could be a salsa. Yeah. Yeah. Could be. It's whatever you'd like it to be, you know. That's why it's that's why it's whimsical. Is it whimsical? Yeah. So it's whimsical. Yeah. Or or you could blend it, and it could be it could be a soup. Good, right? So many different ideas, and this is one base recipe, right? That's my favorite type of recipe. Is that it gives you the, you know, I get the you get the um, what is it? The general idea of what's going on, and then from there you can just, your imagination can go run wild with it. You know, that's how people get, that's how some of the best recipes they get created because people's imagination and their creativity come out when they see like, oh, that's how simple that is. Oh, then I mean, oh, well, what about this? And then, you know, you just, you go down that one. Okay. And then I just top it off with a little bit of cilantro here. Stop cilantro. And let's see. Okay. So this is our uh, tomato juice, fresh tomato juice. And this is already squeezed, so I brought this on my trip already. In, in a, in a, I like using glass because it, it keeps it colder too, and uh, I can just, you know, it's portable. So let's see, I'm just gonna pour this juice in there like this. How do we know there's not a little vodka in that bottle? Uh, you don't. <laughs> <laughs> well, you you did say you were in Vegas, so. I am in Vegas. That's correct. Do you gamble? I, I really don't, honestly. I don't. I'm, I'm more of a, I, I'm a touristy person where I like to go into town, cities, look, you know, I look at all the artwork. I like going and riding bikes in town, looking at the murals, uh, talking to people. Like, uh, I mean, I know it's different. It's, 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 this, is, this is way much different times now. I mean, <laughs> you know, being in Vegas, I guess, than I've been before, but yeah. Well, is, so what is, I'm doing here, is Vegas open? Like the casinos are open and is everything business and usual in Vegas? Well, to be honest, I got here last night, like three in the morning. And by the time I finished unpacking and getting anything ready, I didn't go to bed till six this morning. So I really haven't been outside. <laughs> you other, don't know. Other than to rent to the store and get this knife. That, that's, all I, that's all I've done so far. Okay. What? So what I'm doing here now is with my, my, my clean hand or my glove hand, I'm just kind of pressing down a little bit the, the ingredients to just to make some space. See? And then um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to start adding... Uh, where is the other one? Ah, I didn't. Let me go get there. I wonder if he's at the Flamingo Hotel because there's two pictures of a flamingo on the wall. <laughs> ah, maybe. Yeah, I know. We're, we're going to be able to find you. There's evidence. Yeah. <laughs> there's evidence. Yeah. It's interesting. I mean, if they wear masks in Vegas, one good thing is people can't maybe smoke. That's the one thing I never liked about Vegas was the smoking. Oh. Yeah. I don't, me either. Okay, I forgot. I have limes here, and I have a tomato that I wanted to add. So see, because I've added this, I created a little bit of space. Now I can add a little bit of tomato and a little bit. So I'm gonna use half of this tomato. I like I like having the contrast of, of like different um, the contrast of different. How do you how would you say this? Contrast of different. What I'm trying to say is like because we're using fresh tomato juice, but then I'm also using tomato chunks. So it's like you're getting two versions of the same, you know, of the same vegetable or fruit, but in different, in a different form, you know, and 
I mean, here we go. So this is just half of our tomato, but I just like, in this one, um, here we go. Okay. Take that, drop it in there. And then I have three lines. So, and at this point too, you can start thinking about um, if you're somebody who enjoys like a little bit of spice, you know, if you want to put some hot sauce in there, some spiciness to it, um, you can. I mean, it's up to you. This is your, this is your treat. And I'm just showing you how to get it started, you know, but I mean, you can go wherever you want from this point. Um, let's see. I always uh, see these lines. I always like, kind of just gave them a little poke like this so that when, because I don't have my tweezers. So if I, if I was to do it without that, it, it's like, it's it, it, uh, more work on my hands and my hands will get more tired. And so I've learned like you working in kitchens and, and doing prep work and things like that, different restaurants. It's like when you can have, when the chef can have something handed to them, that's already kind of somewhat prepared in a way where they don't have to do that one step. It just saves so much time and makes your, makes your life uh, a little more stress-free and uh, more efficient in the kitchen. So that's what I really, that's really what, that's another thing that I love to do. I love to redesign kitchens. Did I tell you that? I, I just, I don't think I told anybody this, but it's, it's just because like a little passion of mine. I just love going to kitchens, little tiny kitchens and just making them really like, really functional, really cool. You know, I mean, like literally I have a kitchen right here in my, my hotel room, you know, somebody can stop right by and I'll sell them a, a bottle of this uh, ceviche. <laughs> that's so cool. Have you ever worked in a kitchen or a restaurant? Yeah, I have, I have several. I worked at a, a couple of vegan restaurants too, um, last year actually. I worked at Donna Jean in uh, San Diego and also in Eve and Instant That's so cool. I just want to take a moment to thank a couple people for their generous super chat donations. Mary Davidson and Supercharged Plant-Based Lifestyle. Thank you very, very much. Appreciate it. Hey. You, got me, you, got, you got me two donations. They like you so much. Uh, all right. Let me uh, grab my lid and... And we'll be at the end of this, pretty much the end of the recipe here. Oops. Oh, you guys caught me drinking. Uh oh. It's water. <laughs> it's water, I swear. I swear. So, so uh -huh. ceviche traditionally has some kind of shrimp or, 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 or fish in it, right? So that's why, uh, yeah. So instead of the traditional shrimp, we're replacing it with watermelon. And that's, uh, yeah, you're correct. So here we go. Just give it a good shake. I mean, really. This is now your your mixing bowl, and you can you're just shaking it enough to where it's going to get incorporated everything, all the ingredients. You take a spoon, and you can kind of work through this as well um, in this manner. And if you are um, like me, I, I like things like when, for example, if they sit, they hand me a dish that's supposed to be cold. Like I want it cold. If they hand me something that's supposed to be warm, I want it warm. So for me, like personally, like I would chill this. And I would put it in the refrigerator and let it chill for about an hour or so. Um, and then put it back in the jar. And actually, this is the, and actually, here's a little hack that I would actually, this is what I actually really would do. This is a hack. I would empty this out into a bowl or some other container, put it in the fridge, let it chill. I would take the glass, wash it out, place this in the freezer. So then in an hour, this glass is going to be super frozen. And then you're going to add the cold chilled ceviche back into this. And it's going to be like really, really like refreshing. It's going to be like something that's like, you know, because you're giving it, you're hitting it with so much cold that when you get to it, it's like, oh, this is nice and, and refreshing. Okay. So here's my finished product. Uh, let me plate it for you. And then. Uh, Absolutely. You, you know, uh, Stephanie says, Chef Anthony Cruz is great. I follow him on Instagram and his posts and stories are amazing. I would recommend you guys check it out. Even if you're not on Instagram, as long as somebody's account is public, you can see it because there is a great before and after picture there. You will not believe how large he was. Yeah. I mean, I mean, it, it, you look double, you look like you're pregnant with quadruplets. I mean, it is, I mean, it, this picture on your Instagram, it's the, I don't know, like the one, well, you'll, you'll find it by scrolling down. It's unbelievable. Yeah, that's, that, that's what I'm trying to look for you. My, my, I carry a binder that has that picture on it so I can like, just show anybody who wants to see it. Like, hey, this is where I was at. 
you yeah. can do it too. You know? I mean, you you wouldn't have that picture on your phone or with you, but guys, I, I, if I, I can do. find a way to post it, it's 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 extraordinary. You would not believe how much larger he was. It's it's night and day. And you can just you can click that link above. I don't believe you have to have an Instagram account to look at somebody's Instagram. It's only if they have a private account would that would be. Yeah, mine's case. not private. Yeah. I, no, mine's mine's very mine's, mine's very much public. <laughs> uh, let's see. All right. Linda Middlesworth just came in. I love how she says I just came in. Well, thank you for coming in. You know, we, we could have a whole show about cooking in hotel rooms. You know, I I, I mean, I, I obviously haven't been anywhere since November because of the pandemic and haven't had jobs since then. But I always traveled with my Instant Pot and I've always cooked in my room, you know, potatoes, rice, those kind of things. Yeah, people don't realize like it's actually possible to do this. Like it's not a, it's not uh, out of the question to think that you can't eat healthy on the road, and it just takes a little proper planning and preparation, like anything. But you know, once you get the hang of it, and once you get, um, you know, just used to that kind of having that available to you like that. Um, oh, I have one more thing I want to add. Whew, excuse me. Oh, uh, here they are. <clears throat> Lisa wants to know how long your weight loss took. A year and a half. I don't, I don't think it was. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know if it was exactly a year and a half, but I, that's what I feel that I, I feel comfortable sharing about a year and a half or so. Like I said, I wasn't trying to lose it all at once. I wanted to be gradual, and I wanted it to be like kind of like this. Um, you know, just as, as uh, like, I didn't want to think about my weight. I just wanted, I was more focused on how I was feeling, you know, and I was feeling really great. So, um, yeah. Okay. So what I'm going to do now, this, this is um, these here that I'm going to add for garnish. These are uh, called microgreens. This is a micro salad mix from Coachella Urban Valley Farms. It's a local, uh, a local microgreens farm uh, based out of uh, Bermuda Dunes, Palm Desert in the Coachella Valley. So they sell these uh, packages here for $5. They deliver it. Uh, they're at the farmer's market. So I use these in my dishes uh, whenever uh, whenever I can get a hold of them because these are, these are amazing products. That, that, that's uh, incredible. I always say I always learn one new thing on every show. And yesterday's guest, Jill Dalton, was, was showing how she grows her own microgreens. So where where do you buy those in the desert? So these are, uh, I get these uh, on the, the farmer's market uh, in Palm Desert on what day is it there on Thursday? I, I can't think right now what day it is. but if you look for the the, the local farmers market and, and so, find, so uh, i didn't even realize the farmers markets have reopened yes they did the, the one that's open right now is the palm spring uh but they're going to be re reopening all the markets soon so palm desert palm springs and um la quinta i believe will be available to to customers uh pretty soon if you go on my if you go on instagram though in my I think it's my Instagram or YouTube, not my YouTube, Instagram, Facebook, maybe. I, I share a lot about the microgreens through my, my stories and my accounts. So uh, if you're interested in that, you can, you know, find it on there. Okay. So one, oh, one last thing I wanted to share about microgreens too. Um, not many people know this, but I was kind of shocked when I heard this myself, that these here, uh, even these microgreens, so for example, I take uh, like a handful like this, right? It's about this size of this. And this has, this is a nutrition mix of micro broccoli, red cabbage, kohlrabi, arugula, amaranth, and curly kale. So because they're, 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 they're catching the, um, the nutrients at a, a right stage, they're, they're packed with so many more vitamins and minerals and things like this. So that, that amount you just saw me take, that's basically eating the equivalent of one month's worth of vitamins. There's a handful of this stuff. All right. And while I was explaining that, the disc is magically ready now. Ready to see it? You betcha. Okay. Give me a second here. I'm going to do one more minute, one more adjustment to my process. And this here is my rhythmical watermelon ceviche salad. 
made out of a hotel room in Las Vegas, California. <laughs> okay. So there we go. Let me fix my information. Right. Okay, ready? Let's see. Ready? Here we go. Three, two, one. Oh, where'd it go? There it is. Right there. Oh my God, that's beautiful. And there's your one more picture. So we know what you're having for lunch today. Uh, yeah, you do. <laughs> That's good. So what kind of, what, how did, when you, when you were diabetic, were you just eating the standard American diet, basically? I was eating the standard American diet for two. So, <laughs> you know, I was in that place where it's like, ah, I just want this. I would have sugar savings. I would just go and I would binge on, you know, cookies, cake. Uh, probably, I could eat a probably a medium pizza back then, you know, stuff with loads of meat and cheese on it. Uh, fried chicken, everything. I mean, every, everything, you know. And, and because I was always been a foodie, it's like, well, if I'm going to have those things, I want like the, the, the greasiest, nastiest, brightest, most, you know, delicious, uh, unhealthy versions of those. So now I, now I just flip it around. Like, I'll still eat those same things, like nachos. I'll have nachos. I'll have burritos. I'll have tacos. What is it? Uh, for, you know, um, uh, I don't know, just, just those type of flavors. I just make healthy versions of them. So I'm able to, I'm able to, to create the, the similar, like the flavor profiles that we move it into the vegetables. That looks amazing. Somebody, uh, Kathleen said, did you use the avocado? Oh, it's, uh, it's mixed inside. Yes. Yes, the avocado is in there. Just a very light amount of it. I mean, I probably use like a quarter of the avocado, so very minimal. I mean, if, you, and if you're looking to like avoid avocado, you don't, you don't have to add it. It's just something, it's something I enjoy because, um, you know, a lot, a lot of, I credit, I credit a lot of my cooking skills to my mother. She was a fantastic cook. So, uh, and I, and I learned a lot from her, just being in her kitchen, watching her and her, her process and like learning her flavor profiles. And I just got, a, I don't know, I just got a chills because, uh, you know, my mama, my mama. Beverly wants to know how long were you diabetic? Um, let's see. I mean, I don't know because I can't tell that, I don't know, I don't know like right around when you could say I developed it. But because it seems like when I went to the doctor the first time, he was like, uh, oh, you, the way, the, the way I understood it or the way he, he related to me is like, he, it felt like I had had it for a long time already. I was living with it for a long time. I just didn't realize it, you know? So I would say maybe I had, I could say maybe for, maybe I could say I had it for about a year because I remember there was like a year period of my life where I was just like at the most unhealthiest state. You know, I was, I was really feeling depressed. I was feeling down, uh, had no energy. I was lethargic. And then I started developing symptoms of diabetic. So uh, what do you call it? Like my foot, I was having foot issues. I was having, um, what else? Dry mouth. I, I know, just this different symptoms I never experienced before. And they all of a sudden were hitting me at once. So I probably went through that process for like a year until I realized, oh wait, maybe I should go to the doctor, you know? Wow. That's crazy. Uh, uh, Jeannie wants to know what your Facebook page is called. My Facebook page is called uh, Chef Anthony Cruz without the E. Just Chef Anthony Cruz. I only have the link for his Instagram guys right here. And it has an E, but I can uh -huh. pull it up if you need it. And then you use that same name, Chef Anthony E. Cruz at iCloud. And that's how you reach me through email. Okay. That's amazing that you can make not only delicious food, but such beautiful food just, just in a hotel. <laughs> it's probably better than whatever they're serving downstairs anyways. I'm definitely going to check out those microgreens. They sound great. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, the owner is named Mario Garcia. So get, uh, get in touch with him and he'll, he'll, he'll definitely get you, the, get you in the right direction with that. Have you been able to influence anyone either in your family or friends here in Indio to eat healthier? My daughters, my daughters eat healthy. Um, my sister eats healthy. 
yeah, I, I, I can look around my family and see my influences here and there. You know, maybe not, you know, nobody's 100 percent, but they, I've seen them make positive changes in effort. You know, they, 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 they see, you know, the difference that I made in my life. And I know, um, you know, it, it shows, it, you know, they see it. And so, uh, yeah, we'll just, we'll just go from there. You know, it's, just, it's, it's not important like with what they eat. I just know that they're making better choices now than, than they were before. Wow. Mary says your dish could fetch $40 in a high-end establishment. I'd love for you to take a picture of it for me and, and, and text it to me and we can make it the thumbnail. It is so beautiful. Kathy wants okay. to know if you have a cookbook. Uh, it's in my brain and it's in my phone, but it's not on paper yet. Well, it's going to be hard for us to access it that way. <laughs> yeah. It's nine ninety five a month to access my brain. So it's like, we'll <laughs> You're funny. You're very, very funny. Oh, uh, Kristen says mint leaves would be delicious in that as well. Yeah, mint goes great with all those flavors. Uh -huh. See, that's that's why it's not an exact recipe for this, guys. He just told you the ingredients and put them in any amounts you like. Yeah, so it really is like, so if the, if the recipe comes out wrong, it's pretty much your fault. So you're, you're the one, you're in control. Yeah, that, you're <laughs> funny. You, get, you are, you're hilarious. You're hilarious. So <laughs> nice. Well, anything else you want to add? To anything? Mm, no, just other than that, I'm just like really excited. I have a bunch of a project on the horizon, like as far as um, I'm working on a project uh, to feed uh, plant-based food for the homeless out in India, actually. Um, and That's... I have, uh, I have, yeah, I have, I have, uh, I'm creating a mobile kitchen in my vehicle so I can just roll up to people's spots and, and drop food off to them. You know, so that, that's what I'm working on, things like that. Um, I'm, I'm really liking this mobile mobility, you know, to be able to reach out and kind of go in any direction and help people wherever I'm at. You know, it doesn't necessarily need to be India, you know, that, that I, I and, and I can always go back there too. So that's what's exciting about it. Wow. Susan says, what do you consider your favorite dish of all time? My favorite dish of all time. Ooh, is it? Uh, hmm. Wow! Um, what you put on the spot? Yeah, that's I don't I don't uh, I would say just you know what I'll, I'll, I'm going to share this just a really really good well made veggie burrito you know with a lot of love in the beans a lot of love in the in, in you know all the ingredients but there's my favorite dish right there if I can get somebody to make me some food that I can taste the love all the way through the recipe that's my favorite dish right there. Wow. Okay. So, yep. So Beverly wants to know what you eat in a day and does it matter? Does it, is it different if you're traveling? Ver ver where is home now? You're, you're never, <laughs> you're like a nomad. Home is where my heart is. <laughs> no. Um, okay. So what was the question? <laughs> oh, yeah, what do you eat? What do you eat in a day now? Oh, in a day. Uh, um, it fluctuates. Like I said, I, I'm very intuitive with my body. So it's like, I, I kind of just like listen to my body. Like right now, my body, you know, my body's telling me to eat right now. Is this what's right in front of me. <laughs> After that, I'll probably, um, I'm going to probably venture off and listen to some, uh, well, I don't know. I haven't really, this is my first time being in Vegas as a, as a, I guess, vegan chef or, or plant-based chef, whatever. So I'm actually curious to see what's available out there. So in fact, if your followers want to follow my YouTube, I'm sorry, my Instagram channel today, I'll probably just be running around like looking at vegan spots. And if they want to maybe catch what I'm eating later on afternoon, let's find it there. Yeah. Uh, Abdi says, too bad you don't have a restaurant. You think you might ever open one? And actually, it's a funny thing. I did have a restaurant. I have like the, I have the best story ever about owning a restaurant. It was open for a total of like two days. <laughs> It was over in Ransom where I was hitting in this little touch in this little corner where nobody found me near the hospital over on um what street was this on? I don't remember the street, but uh, anyways, I, I just you know, long story short, it didn't work out, but it, it's just a funny story. Like I I I guess I technically had a restaurant already. So but uh, yeah. And I'm, I'm doing this now. So now I'm a mobile restaurant. I just take the restaurant experience to people. That's great. That's great. Have you ever been a personal chef? Yeah. I do that as well. I do private dinners, private events. Uh, right now, I get booked to do small parties, small extra parties, no more than ten. Uh, nicely, even you know, nice three course, four course. Actually, no, I do four course dinners. So nice four course dinners, appetizers, uh, desserts, uh, plant based. Um, what is it? Appetizers, dessert, main, and sometimes I'll incorporate uh, drinks in there too, like pair drinks with uh, the food. Just really what what, what the uh, what kind of experience the um, the client's looking for, you know, that's what I'm able to create. 
That is great. Well, this has sort of been a lot of fun and you really surprised me. I had no idea you were going to be doing this from a hotel room, but thank you for doing that. Oops, you got me in, you got me another super chat because you're so darn cute from Alexi, who says you're so special, Chef AJ. Thank you for your hard work. He said, thank you for your kind donation. I appreciate it. And a monarch says, I love that he wants to provide plant-based whole foods for the homeless. Where are yeah. the homeless in Indio? Because it's so hot. I, I don't, I don't see a lot of them, to be honest. There's actually, uh, there's, there's shelters, uh, they're called, uh, what are they called? Cool, cool centers, cold centers, something like that, where people that are homeless don't have a place to stay, they can go. I think there's one at Martha's Village, Martha's Kitchen in India, and there's also another one, uh, there's another one there, but I, I, I know of, um, just, just being in an area, that's the places that they go. And yeah, then, this is, and this is not the place to be if you're homeless. <laughs> I mean, it's just too hot, you yeah, know? If, yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah, well, great. Well, I, I come back to Indio, I hope, someday, when we're not, <laughs> when we're not sheltering. I'll, I mean, be, we, I'll be back on Sunday, by the way. <laughs> yeah, well, that's, that's great. You know, we haven't been able to have our meetup. Anybody that's watching, I know occasionally I'll see people that are from La Quinta yeah, or Indio. Right. We have a meetup. It's called Health, uh, Chef AJ's Healthy. Uh, I forget what it's even called now. But it, we, I have a meetup group, and we have about 300 local people, but we haven't been able to meet in, since February. So because yeah. of the libraries are yep. close. So yeah, Shane Everything. says he has such a big heart. Yes, he does. So guys, check out his Instagram. You'll want to see that before and after picture. If you can text it to me, Anthony, I can put it on okay. on this video yeah, as a thumbnail along with the dish. So why don't you just hold the dish up one more time and show it in case somebody tuned in okay. late. Okay, let me, uh, and let me, let me also, let me get my phone real quick. So I can show you on this, on my, um, on my end. Before I show the picture again, let me, let me, uh, um, I'm going to go to oh, right here. It is. I don't know if you can see that on oh, it? which way do I go? A little bit lower in talk. You have to talk while it's on. Okay, right there. Do you see that now? There's your. There's your. There's your proof. <laughs> right there that is amazing amazing okay so i'm going to show you the disc from this angle which is like right there but i'll take a nicer picture and i'll send it to you can you see it right there there you go is that good it looks delicious wow thank you so much anthony for doing this you're welcome and uh, I hope to see you back in the desert very soon. I'll be, I'll be back there soon, yes, of course. Well, thank you for having me on here. This was a lot of fun. This was, lot of fun. this was great. Let me just see who's on tomorrow. Oh, wow. So we have another chef tomorrow. We have Kathy Fisher. So this will be great. I love that. I love the demos. They're my favorite. Well, I don't want to say they're my favorite. I love the doctors too, but they're just, they're very, very fun. Yeah. And thank you guys yeah. so much for watching another episode of Chef AJ Live. As I mentioned, please come back tomorrow at 11 when Kathy Fisher is going to be making, I believe she's making herb roasted potatoes and a ketchup. You take care now, Anthony, and congratulations right. on reversing your diabetes. Thank you. Take care. Bye.